These are my tips on how to grow really thin, fine hair, long and healthy. So by thin, fine hair, I mean that each individual strand is really thin, it's wispy, um, it breaks easily, it's very delicate hair. And the amount of hair that grows out of my head, it's not a lot. So this isn't the best hair type for long hair, but I love long hair, so I grew it long. So the first tip is to cut off any um, split ends, any damaged ends, any dry ends. You want to start off with a clean slate. So if you already have healthy ends, you can skip this first step. The second step is to not cut your hair for an extended period of time. I went a full year without cutting my hair. Now if that seems like too much for you, you could try six months or eight months but I recommend going the full year because hair grows approximately half an inch a month and if you wait the full year, you will get six inches of growth. Now this brings me to my third step, which is during this time that you're not cutting your hair, you are going to treat it exceptionally well. You will treat it like an expensive silk scarf. You would not put silk in the washing machine. You would wash it by hand. So that same idea applies to your hair. You're going to treat it with um, tremendous care. So first thing, you will not be using any heat tools. Um, you can do heatless styles. So YouTube has a plethora of videos on heatless styles and you have so many to pick and choose from. You are not going to bleach your hair. You're not gonna dye your hair. You're not gonna put any chemicals on your hair. You're just gonna leave it alone you will buy a silk pillowcase. I know that these are kind of expensive, but they're worth it because when you're sleeping, your hair glides across the pillowcase, whereas on a cotton pillowcase, it drags. So definitely look into getting a silk pillowcase. Um, you will wash it every other day or every third day. And I know the urge to wash really thin, fine hair every day is huge. Um, I know my hair gets so oily but definitely try to go every other day if you can because you don't wanna be washing it every day since that's just really hard on your hair. Um, you can take collagen. I take the Vital Proteins. I don't have it here with me right now, but I've used NACA and NeoCell before. Um, and they're good too. I just really like the Vital Proteins. I also drink green tea. Um, I have a mug of it a day. Green tea has so many health benefits, but it's also good for skin and for your hair. And I do take iron supplements periodically. Um, this also brings me to my next point. Uh, but first, I take iron um, usually during that time of month. Um, I used to take it on a regular basis because I had extremely low iron. Um, I was on a vegetarian diet and I'll get to my next point, which is I don't recommend a specific diet for growing your hair. So for example, I don't recommend vegan or carnivore specifically for hair growth. And I say this because when I was on this vegetarian diet, um, my iron got dangerously low. My hair was shedding. I was tired all the time, like unreasonably tired. And I finally went to the doctor and they did blood work and you know my iron was so low and I should have gone to the doctor first and had blood work done before I started this diet so always see your doctor first before going on any kind of diet because you never know how your body's gonna react to it like I didn't know that being a vegetarian was gonna be bad for me I know that there are vegetarians who are very healthy and you know we're all different um, our bodies are different and the kinds of um, dietary needs that people have are also different so just be really careful before you embark on any kind of special diet i also recommend avoiding things that you find in your kitchen to put in your hair so like mayonnaise bananas avocados eggs don't put that in thin hair. Um, I made that mistake and I put avocado in my hair at one point and I know one time I put mayonnaise in my hair. And it was a nightmare trying to wash that out. So 
Um, I think with thin fine hair, you should use products that are designed for your hair and um, also products that are meant for thin hair. Yeah, you, you don't wanna be putting things you find in your kitchen on your hair. My next tip might be controversial and it's to not put coconut oil in your hair. And I know on YouTube and on blogs, people are always talking about coconut oil, but I don't think it's great for thin fine hair. And I used to put coconut oil on my hair. And again, it's just too difficult to wash it out. I feel like you're doing more damage um, by the extra washing you have to do in order to get the coconut oil out. So for an oil, um, I have two and I only put it in the lengths of my hair. So I have this one from AG and it's the Oil Extra Virgin Argon Miracle Smoothing Oil. And this one has a pump applicator. I do like it, but I tend to reach for this oil more, which is the JVN Nourishing Shine Drops. And the reason for this is because this one has a dropper. So you can control exactly how much you're putting into your hair. And for fine hair, this is really helpful. And with oils, these oils, I put this in just um, the lengths of my hair. I never put the oil um, up here. And what else? Um, oh yes, this is very important. You need to find a stylist who understands and respects that you are growing your hair long and they will not sabotage you. So when I go see my stylist and I ask her to trim that much off or that much off, she listens to me and does exactly what I ask. And this is important because when you get to your desired length and you go in for your regular trims, you don't want all the length that you've worked so hard to grow to be chopped off. So definitely find someone who listens to you and you know understands you want long hair. Um, I usually go for trims every three months, but I can change it depending on how my ends are doing. So sometimes I can space it out to four months if my ends are doing really well. Um, and sometimes it's two months if I feel like I have an extra amount of split ends. And my last tip is to opt for an all one length cut. Um, I find that all one length on thin hair gives the most volume possible. Um, I guess, I mean, I feel when I have layers, it makes my hair look even thinner and finer, but I guess I could cut some face framing layers, maybe. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do that though. For now, I'm gonna stick with the all one length cut. Um, I just think it makes my hair look as full as possible. And you might hear some stylists say, you know, that if you have thin hair, it should be collarbone length or like the longest it can be is up to here. But I totally disagree with that. Just because you have thin hair doesn't mean you can't have long hair. So if this video was helpful to you and you have fine hair and you're looking to grow it long, um, I hope that some of these tips helps you out. Um, if you have fine hair and you've grown it long and you have any tips you want to add, please leave it in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, please subscribe, comment, like, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.